Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator at And Easton Antique Arms. Now, this is a fairly simple and brief point, but something which I think that um, I take for granted and other people know, but maybe a lot of you out there don't realise. So when we come to antique swords, a lot of the models which um, are 100 years old or more in some cases are actually still current regulation. Um, and so, for example, you know, I just pick up the reason I'm holding this one, it's only this arrived yesterday. So I had a few swords turn up yesterday from auction, um, which are going to be going on my website in due course, uh, Eastern Antique Arms, link below. And this is a World War One era, George V, 1897 pattern sword. As you can see, it's a bit grubby, but it's basically in good condition. The blade is bright, the etching is clear, the guard is bright and still nickel-plated, the plating hasn't lifted off, even the scabbard is in pretty tidy condition. Now this is in almost, although not quite, what we would call current parade condition. So with some cleaning up and with some attention, this would be absolutely fine for a British infantry officer to wear on parade for ceremonial duties today. And the reason being that the 1897 pattern sword despite the fact it says George V on it, is still current regulation. That I think some people believe that you have to have the current uh, monarch's cipher, for example Elizabeth II, um, on the guard and on the blade, the two places where it appears. Um, that's not actually the case, as far as I can tell. I've never seen that in any regulations. And I do have uh, quite a few friends who are current um, British Army, um, and or, or and or past British Army, and I've never heard from any of them any problems with using um, current regulation patterns from former monarchs, because of course they wouldn't expect you to. If the monarch changed, they wouldn't expect you to go out and buy a new sword. Um, if you know you were had an Edward the Seventh sword, for example, and then it moved over to George the Fifth, well, the people with the Edward the Seventh swords wouldn't be told to go out and buy a new sword with George the Fifth cipher on. They'd just keep the same swords. So since 1897, the uh, infantry um, pattern sword, and in fact this is the Sam Brown scabbard, they've come with two scabbards originally, I'll talk about scabbards in a second, is still the current regulation. Um, so, you know, clearly since 1897, swords haven't been used an awful lot, except on parade. Um, so when they arrived at this pattern, um, they basically never got around to changing it. And that's true of many militaries. If we look at the French military um, or um, the German military or the American military, for example, you'll see that some of the regulations of swords in use today have been in use for a long time. So you can get old examples. Now, why would you get an old example? That's the important point here. Basically, they're very often much better quality than the modern ones. Okay, so for the most part, modern um, dress swords, as they're viewed now, because they are only used for dress, are made for that purpose. They're, uh, certainly in America, the blades are often made of stainless steel. They're not really functional swords. Um, and in the UK, they are made of carbon steel, um, but they're not made in the UK. Most of them are made in India now. Um, in fact, I think pretty much all of them are made in India. They might be assembled in the UK or assembled in Germany, but I believe that the blades and the parts for the most part, are um, made in India these days. And basically the steel's not so good, the heat treatment's not so good, the fit and finish is not so good. I have had, obviously in my life, the ability to handle uh, probably thousands, yeah, definitely thousands, maybe tens of thousands of uh, 19th century and early 20th century swords now. And I have handled quite a lot of the modern ones, uh, even the ones that were made by Wilkinson uh, in the later part of the 20th century and even into the beginning of the 21st century, because I think they folded uh, pretty much at the beginning of the 21st century, about 2002. Um, and um, they are not as good quality. So even the reputable makers, I won't name makers because that's unfair and I might <laughs> come under legal attack from them, uh, but even the reputable makers who make parade quality swords today, they may say that those swords are tested in the same way and that they're made to the same quality as the originals. They are not, uh, as far as I have seen. Okay, So if there is a maker out there who is making current military issue swords, uh, that are as good as swords were in the time of George V, or let's say around World War I, if you are out there and you believe that your current military regulation swords are as good in structural quality and fit and finish um, as the original ones from 100 years ago, then send me one, and if it's as good, I will say it and I will endorse it. Okay, so there's a challenge to you. If you, if you 
I believe that yours are as good as, as the originals from 100 years ago. Send me one and I will agree with you and I will advertise your product for free. If you don't believe that your product is as good as the originals from 100 years ago, then I suspect I'm not going to receive anything from you. So there we go. That's my statement. So why, you know, British Army officers, if you're in the infantry or cavalry or artillery, whatever, Royal Navy, if you're going to buy a sword, if you can buy an antique that is current regulation pattern, so if you're in the infantry, it would be, for an officer, it would be 1897. If you're a cavalry officer, it would be the 1912. If you're in the Royal Artillery, it would be the 1821 uh, with the straight-backed grip that post-dates 1896. At Royal Navy, it's the 1827 pattern with the 1846 pattern blade, so on and so forth, okay? If you're a current serving military officer and you want advice on this, by all means, message me. I have sold many swords to serving officers um, around the world, actually, British military entirely, but some, you know, based in the UK, some based in Afghanistan and elsewhere. OK, so uh, there we go. I would say if you're an officer who cares about your sword, don't throw lots of money at one of the modern made ones. Get a good quality, good condition, original one, maybe from World War One or even late Victorian. I have a friend who's a major in the Coldstream Guards. He carries a Victorian Coldstream Guards officer's sword, and that's fine. He's allowed to do that. Um, then get an original, endorse the originals, because they are a hell of a lot better, and they're heirlooms that will keep and increase their value, and they're much, much better quality than the modern made ones. Thanks for watching, folks, and I will see you for the next video. Cheers! Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.